Hey, what's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. I just got done reading Deadly Class by Rick Remender, so we're going to do a quick little spoiler-free review. Stay tuned. All right, y'all. First of all, I had this book in the library for a little while now, and a lot of people have recommended this to me because I know I'm a big Rick Remender fan. I, I like his work with Agent Venom, his Uncanny X-Force, one of my top favorite Marvel books. So everybody was saying you got to read Deadly Class, and also they're uh, coming out with a TV show on the Sci-Fi Network, I believe, uh, for this storyline. Actually, I'm going to throw up a picture right now of the casting. Now, I don't know if this was fan casting or if this is the real cast. If it's the real deal, they killed it with the casting on this show, man. These uh, actors look spot on to the characters uh, from, the, from the story. But like I said, uh, this is going to be a spoiler-free review. First of all, this is the Deluxe Edition, which is a very large book. It's the size of a DC Absolute Edition without the slip uh, slipcase. Collects issues 1 through 16 of Deadly Class and had a $50 cover price. I don't know if this is out of print or if it's still available on in-stock trades. You might want to check if it's something that you want to read. But basically, Deadly Class is about a school. It's an underground school where basically the head of crime organizations or like underbosses or like those big type of organization, this is where they send their kids to go to school and they learn the deadly arts. They learn how to be assassins. They learn how to uh, fight, do, do all that kind of shit. So it's set in the 80s and it's supposed to feel like um, a high school book. Think like an 80s high school movie, but with that twisted factor of learning the deadly arts so the thing about the 80s references i think it's a good idea but i think if if they're not uh purposely saying something 80s you forget that you're in the 80s it seems like a very modern book until they say like something like oh did you hear the new ll cool j uh record or something like that you know they mentioned little pop culture references here and there but i think they could have did a little bit more of that but basically, uh, our main character is Marcus, and he's orphaned, and they kind of recruit him, right, because of uh, his reputation. And I don't want to give any spoilers away, because they don't really tell you what his reputation was in the beginning, or how he got it, but you find out later in the book, and then you're like, okay, that makes sense why they recruited him. The headmaster of the school is like some older sensei type of dude, and, um, and, and uh, they recruit him with... Um, one of the lead female characters, her name is Saya. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but she's like a an Asian uh, assassin type of chick. And then she introduces him to the other people in the school. Now, the school is very clicky, like most high schools are, but you have like your gangsters, gangbanger dudes. Then you have like your punk dudes. Then you had like your, uh, your redneck type of crew. Kind of like a jail um, click type of story, right? So our uh, character, Marcus, he's 14 years old, but he's living uh, on the streets, living with the homeless people under a bridge and stuff like that. And uh, he's depressed. He's de depressed about life, about uh, the fact that uh, everybody dies and he's, uh, he does drugs and stuff like that. Going to the school doesn't really change any of that, except for the living on the streets part. But even though it's like... Um, uh, forbidden to do they do drugs they have sex they uh a lot of high school type of stuff right but for example like the first one of the first lessons they have to go to the surface because they're underground in the school and they have to uh kill somebody who's deserving of it so uh that's kind of like the introduction to the violent side of uh of deadly class and um and then you know it's a lot of character development you know um you find out a lot of people aren't who they say they are they have these reputations but a lot of it is bullshit i know i'm talking about the school a lot but in these 16 issues i think that's the smaller part of it the biggest part of the book is what happens when they go out in, in the real world and they start uh doing their missions or or getting involved in their personal things so the main antagonist in the book is somebody from Marcus's uh, childhood that he shared a room with him at the boys' home where he lived, where he was orphaned. And they kind of allude to the fact that he may have been, uh, you know, sexually assaulted by this guy. Uh, he was definitely messing with him. He he has he left scars over Marcus's whole body. 
And um, he comes into the mix, and he's all deformed. For I'm not going to tell you what happened, but his face is now all deformed. His nose is missing. Basically, you get the idea that Marcus did something to him before he left the boys' home. So he comes back in the mix, and that's kind of the main antagonist uh, through like the first arc of the story. Marcus is in love with the girl, Saya, who recruited him. Um, but he's 14 years old, man. You know, he's kind of scared to approach her. He actually gets uh, seduced by the other female character, Maria, who's like a Dawn of the Dead type character. She wears, uh, what's the saying go? De, de Morta? I don't know, I'm probably saying that wrong. Anyway, she's badass, but she's in an abusive relationship with Chico, who is the son of like the biggest crime boss, uh, whatever, in California or some shit like that. But basically, uh, she seduces Marcus. Chico finds out that's not good. And uh, that becomes a whole nother uh, arc of the story with um, the repercussions of that. I don't want to give any spoilers away. It's definitely a good book you should read. I hope I'm selling it right. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, uh, Marcus is a badass character. He's he, he develops a lot through these 16 issues because he's kind of apprehensive at first, but He's kind of like the leader at the end of the uh, at the end of the day here. Let's flip through the art, uh, the book to look at some of the art, and I'm I'll probably remember some of the better uh, parts of the story here. All right, so here's a look at the artwork for Deadly Class. Uh, it looks like Craig is the artist. I'm not really sure of his first name. I know Rick Remender is the writer. Uh, this volume is called Noise, Noise, Noise. It must be an eighty reference that I'm not familiar with. But yeah, see, it says it takes place in 1987. That's pretty cool. So you have very modern art, almost like, I want to say art deco type of vibe. So here's our main characters. Here goes Marcus. Here is Saya. I forget the other guy's names. Maybe I'll see it in here. I like this forward by David Lapham, though. It was dope. So you have very, like, what do you call this? Monochrome colored or whatever. So, like, this whole page is like a pink look. Then this is all green. This is mostly red. This is him, you know, Marcus living on the streets, thinking about his childhood, his past. Obviously something bad happened. Here's the headmaster of the school. I forget his name. There goes Saya, badass chick. So this is like a Russian, like, Colossus type of guy that, uh, Victor is his name, that's right. That, uh, kind of... He thinks he's the shit. Here goes Marcus's body that's all scarred up, like I was telling you guys. So Marcus starts to bond with um, this dude. I forget what his name is, man. But that becomes his first friend. Marcus can't really have friends because he's so uh, antisocial. Like, he's so awkward. He's always thinking about what did he say wrong. He analyzes everything at the end of the day on what he said to his to people or whatever. Damn, I can't I can't remember this guy's name, man. Willie is his name, I think. Pretty sure his name is Willie. All right, so remember that I said that they were, uh, you know, kind of good friends because when you read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. This is them going to some kind of uh, rave or something and, and tripping on acid. They're doing acid right here. It's crazy. There goes Manimal. There goes our boy Chico, who's Maria's boyfriend. And yeah. But you can kind of see, like, these are all purple. Here goes Yellow Pages. Fighting with Chico, crashing through the 7 Eleven. See him all scarred up again, but you can kind of see how the artwork looks with all the different colors. Here goes Saya, or Sa, Sa, I think it's Saya. Badass character, though, man. So here goes Chico's dad and Maria. She's badass too, man, but she's crazy as shit. She got all kinds of problems. <laughs> That's funny. So 
he smashes this chick. He thinks it's like Maria. He wakes up. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Some nasty chick. And he thinks she gets herpes and stuff. So then she says she's pregnant. Like, yo, it's crazy, man. It's a crazy book. So I don't want to give out too much away. Uh, the back does have some variant covers. And it does have um, some sketches as well on the back. And a script. Anyway, that's the review on Deadly Class. Uh, my biggest gripe with it is that it, le it leaves on a cliffhanger. There's no volume two that's been solicited yet that I know about. And I'm ready to read the next issues to find out what happened. The show sounds promising, but usually with these TV shows that come from comic books, they have a strong first season or first few episodes, and then it kind of gets whack. Uh, I'm not really a TV guy anyway, so, you know, put out these books. Who's, who's watching TV? Anyway, uh, let me know what you thought about Deadly Class. Uh, hit the like on the way out. Let me know if uh, this makes you want to pick it up or watch the show. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more recent reads along with uh, daily content. We always uh, got something going on here, whether it's a review of a storyline, a statue unboxing and review, a live show. You know, we're always doing something. So make sure to subscribe and y'all stay minty fresh. Peace.